in continuation with the last uh, lecture on software testing where we mainly discussed black box testing methods now we will discuss some of the white box testing methods and uh, let's see what the techniques are and how you derive your test suits and different test cases through an analysis of the code so let's first look at uh, what are the different black box and white box testing techniques and uh, you know it's an overview of uh, these two different techniques with a comparison so in black box testing basically modules are first tested externally from the point of view of the externally observable behavior so the tester uses the external interface for testing and in white box testing as opposed to the black box approach the tester has the knowledge of the code so in a black box method you do not know what is there inside so given a module if you want to test the module the tester that the code that the module contains but basically the specifications or the contracts that are supported by the module so based on the contracts or externally observable behavior the tester derives the test cases and tests these modules in the black box fashion but in white box technique the tester looks at the code and then derives the test cases so in a white box method basically the test cases do not get derived from the high level specifications or the functional requirements you are mainly looking at the code the structures the usage of variables the different control paths data flow paths and so on so thus tester has knowledge of code in white box testing and test cases are generated to test the coding structures these are the main differences in black box and white box approaches so this slide summarizes black box testing techniques which are external testing techniques for example first one is the functional or feature testing we also have seen boundary value testing where you mainly look at the boundaries of the different parameters that you pass to functions and find out whether the module works with the extremes and, uh, and also check for the behavior beyond the extremes then test for absence of features so for example uh, whether a given feature or a use case has been supported or not that can be found out uh, through black box testing measures so you typically use specifications to generate the test data and then white box testing which is mainly internal testing so the difference is mainly from internal or external perspectives so this is also called structural testing because the internal structure is used to generate test data so typically it covers test for statement coverage conditional branch coverage different paths in the control flow of the program or the module but this does not detect absence of features in the software for example if we look at a module which has a while statement and which mainly covers a specific feature you will be mainly not looking at the feature you know, for, for which the while statement has been uh, programmed but you are mainly looking at the conditions and applying certain criteria which we are going to see and deriving these test cases so we have a few examples for uh, the feature you know, how this white box testing criteria may not detect absence of features in the software so uh, uh, that for that we have uh, uh, an example in later slides so let's continue with our uh, coverage criteria and uh, explore more about these white box testing techniques so let's look at statement coverage first 
So, what statement coverage says is that you select a test suite such that each statement in the program is executed at least once. So, if you have a program of 5000 lines, your test suite that satisfies the statement coverage criteria will generate as many test cases as required to cover all these statements. So, if you have 5000 lines of code, you do not require 5000 test cases to cover all the 5000 lines of code. You might be able to do or cover these statements with lesser number of test suits. For example, if you just have a single sequence without any branching, just one case may be enough to uh, cover all the statements. So, what is the motivation for this particular criteria? Why do you go for statement coverage criteria? So, this is basically uh, from the fact that an error may get masked if tests do not execute parts of the program. So, uh, for example, if you are not covered all the statements, you might be actually hiding an error which may be because of those statements that have not been covered by your test suits. So, a statement coverage criteria guarantees that all statements in the program are covered at least once. So, when we say all statements, we basically mean elementary all elementary statements. So, what are the elementary statements? You can find them out from the syntactic definition of the language that you are using for programming. So, for example, an assignment statement is an elementary statement, a procedure call, an I O statement in the conventional block structure languages, for example, printf, scanf. So, these are the elementary statements, all of them should be covered at least once. So, as we have seen, this slide summarizes that a test case may cover many statements and one may try to minimize the number of test cases such that all statements are still covered. So, how do we reduce the number of test cases and try to cover as many statements as possible? So, it is not required that you have as many test cases as the number of statements in the program. You can cover all the elementary statements with a few fewer test cases. So, what is the criteria? What are the techniques? Let us continue and let us find out answers to these questions. So, here is an example for statement coverage. So, this is a function that calculates Fibonacci at place n integer n Fibonacci integer n and it is defined on n 0 or more. So, let us look at this code. So, you have an if statement if n is less than 2 then you return n else if n is greater than or equal to 2 you recursively apply this Fibonacci and so you calculate Fibonacci n minus 1 and then you add to it Fibonacci n minus 2. So, which are the elementary statements in this? Is this if statement elementary statement? So, this is not an elementary statement, this is a branching statement, but this return n, this is an elementary statement or basic statement in this in the terminology of statement coverage, and this is another return statement which is also an elementary statement. So, what the criteria says is that you must be able to cover all these state elementary statements through your test suit. So, is it possible to cover these two statements within one uh, with one case itself? If you look at the first condition, it is n less than 2. So, that means this is for uh, n greater than or equal to 0, this will be satisfied by 0 and 1 values against the values of n. And if you look at this else part or this return the, uh, the number by recursive computations of Fibonacci n minus 1 and n minus 2. And here the condition is uh, satisfied by a value 
of n to be greater than or equal to 2. So, you cannot get one test suit to cover these two statements require two at least two cases. So, two are enough. So, for example, here the, the green box below gives one such test suit n is equal to 3 and n is equal to 1. So, this test suit contains two different test runs. So, you have to execute this program twice first with a value of n to be say 3 and then with a value of n to be 1. So, if you execute this program this Fibonacci function with n to be 3 this else part will be applicable and you will cover this second elementary statement whereas if you execute this program with the value of n as 1 the first elementary statement will be covered. So, this gives you the statement coverage criteria. So, this is an example of statement coverage. Now, let us look at some of the observations. So, we say that missing features do not get detected. So, how, how come? So, are, are there missing features? For example, in this program, if number supplied is negative, the function does not report an error. So, there is no feature in this function to return with an error if the number supplied is negative. So, that feature will not get detected because our coverage criteria if you look at mainly is from the point of view of covering what the statements are there. What is not there it is it's, it's not covering. So, if you are able to cover these two elementary statements you satisfy the statement coverage criteria. So, even otherwise black box measures will not be able to detect missing features and this is an example that we had, we had, we had promised. So, if the number supplied is negative the function does not report an error and if this is a wanted feature, but which is missing in the software this we will not be able to detect through statement coverage because such a test case is not generated through this particular coverage technique. We are only mainly worried about covering the statements which are there and then you uh, we do not cover implicit statements. So, what are those implicit statements? Example is on the next slide. So, we have here another function a flip function which takes in a boolean variable and returns a boolean result. So, this function is intended to flip the variable and return the flipped boolean value. So, what is expected with uh, flip true is false and uh, the expected result on flip false is true. So, let us look at the code that uh, we have for this uh, flip statement and let us see what happens uh, when we apply statement coverage criteria. So, you have declared a boolean local variable. So, what, what you are saying is that if var what, whatever comes in if var is true then first assign false to local and return local. So, this is just this is just an example. Now, you have two elementary statements here this is one assignment statement and the return statement. So, local equal to false is one elementary statement and local and return local is another statement. So, in order to cover local equal to false and return local you have one test suit which is enough. So, if you have var to be true this assignment will get executed local equal to false because if boolean value var is true then this is true predicate will evaluate to true and the local equal to false assignment will get executed and you will be able to see the correct return value to be false. So, var equal to true is sufficient to cover all the statements, but the error that flip does not work with var equal to false is not detected. So, why does this not get detected? The reason is that we have overlook the else part. So, when you have this if statement you also have the else part which is implicit here. 
So, we have to also cover that implicit part. So, the next slide gives you the implicit L statement. So, if you look at the code, we have also added now the implicit statement and this, this program and the program on the earlier slide are equivalent. So, we have else do nothing. So, uh, and simply return local. So, uh, if you have false and if you say that the value of local is assigned to one, one default, you this may not work correctly. For example, test suit var equal to true is not sufficient to cover all statements. Now, if you assign local equal to var in the first statement and if you simply return local as it is, then you will not get correct value. For example, I will make a small change on this slide and you say here local equal to var and let us look at this program now. So, if you assign the initial value of local to be var as it is and uh, then you will be returning local as it is. So, if you execute this with false, you will return false. So, test suit var equal to 2 is not sufficient to cover all statements. Error that flip does not work with var equal to false will get detected with this test suit var equal to 2 var equal to false. So, now if you want to cover this statement, you need to have you need to execute this else part and in order to execute else part var should not be true. So, that gives you another input value for this parameter var to be false. So, if you have this test suit, then you are able to cover all these elementary statements. So, basically this, this assignment statement and the second else part, both of them you are able to cover if you use the second test suit. So, in the last slide, if you have uh, since the program does not contain the else part, you might overlook that uh, else part and not uh, you might not uh, generate the test suit to cover that statement and then that results in an insufficient statement coverage criteria and uh, uh, you will not be able to detect the error. So, if you look also look at the implicit statement, the implicit branches and apply the statement coverage criteria, you are, you are improving on your statement coverage and you will cover errors that get resulted due to such implicit statements now which are not seen in the source code. Now, we will move on to another technique after uh, seeing the statement coverage criteria which talks about uh, path based uh, testing. So, basic path testing. So, what are the basic paths in the in the program such that if you cover these basic paths, you will be able to uh, cover all the statements in the program. So, uh, in this basic path testing method, you select test suit such that the basic paths are covered and this guarantees that every statement gets covered. So, let us look at this path based criteria and uh, uh, and link it to uh, statement coverage. So, uh, representation we basically have representations for elementary statements such as assignments, IO, call, then conditional statements such as basically the if then else statement and uh, you, are, you may also have the case statement then conditional loops while do and repeat until and sequential composition of two sequential statements. So, now these are the uh, primitives that give you variations in the control uh, flow of the program and uh, you can generate the control flow uh, diagram of a given modular program and, and then go through different paths and see which how many paths you should uh, test. In, in other words, how many test cases uh, you should generate so that you cover the basic paths and then all these basic paths lead to coverage of all the statements in the program that you are testing. So, let us look at uh, some of these primitives that are used to generate these control flow of uh, graphs. So, first is the sequential composition, you have two statements. So, here is one example, you have S1 uh, which uh, calculates interest as balance into some x uh, percentage factor and S2 as uh, uh, balance equal to balance plus interest. So, uh, you add this interest into the balance. So, you have S1 followed by S2. So, this is your sequential composition and if you just have only these sequential statements one after the other S1 followed by S2 followed by S3 followed by S4, then that would mean that you 
just need to have one test suit so that you can cover the entire uh, the, uh, the all the statements in the program so you have only one path and you will have uh, one test test suit here if you have just only the sequential composition then next we need to look at the branching statement so for example you have a code on the slide if employee dot performance is high then you have you apply one incentive equal to x some value x else incentive is x by 2 and then print employee id employee dot id and and the incentive so if you have four statements here s1 s2 s3 s4 and this is your equivalent flow graph so you have from at s1 is a branching node from s1 you can go to s2 and s3 and you then come back to s4 so s4 is uh, after the if then else so s4 executes after the uh, entire if then else statement executes so it is basically is a join point or uh, it is a join of uh, the two branches and s1 is the fourth point where you branch into two different uh, paths so else part is the s3 part and the if part is the s2 part so in this for this particular flow uh, how many test cases do you require so that you cover all the statements you require two test cases so that the one path is s1 s2 s4 and and the another path takes uh, covers nodes s1 s3 and s4 so uh, you have two basic paths in this program and which you can for which uh, uh, you can test and that will result into the the, st the statement coverage criteria including all the paths that get generated due to uh, all, all the possible branchings at this at this particular condition node now uh, this is the while statement so in while statement you execute a condition at the uh, beginning of the uh, while loop and uh, while that condition is true you continue to execute the the body of the while loop and uh, at the end of the while loop the, the condition uh, evaluates to false you terminate the while loop and then the program continues so in this slide we have uh, three statements and uh, so you, you are processing a file so while it's not end of file you uh, read a value from file and print it and uh, when the end of file is reached the statement gets terminated and you continue with the program so s3 is the next statement so it's basically you can see that it's a sequential composition of s1 s2 together as as while loop and then s3 at the end of the while loop so s1 is your uh, conditional statement from where you can go to s2 and from s2 you come back to s1 to check the condition so it can be seen seen here from this figure that in while loop you first check the condition so typically this, this is a usage when you open a file you first want to check whether you know, before reading first want to check whether uh, you have already reached the end of file if the file has no input you will not uh, want to read the value from that file so you can you have to check before you execute the uh, the while loop body so this, this is a typical usage where you uh, you want to first check for the condition and then continue so from s1 we can see that you can so s3 is the termination of the while loop or the last the, uh, it's outside the while loop so uh, once you reach s3 you continue with the rest of the program and s2 is your body of the while loop so we have now uh, combined these two statements into one one s2 itself because adding one more statement here will not make a difference to number of paths because it is the same path in the same path itself you, uh, if you have these nodes you can merge them so we come back to s1 after we read the value from the file and print it and check the condition again and if if the end of file has not been reached you still you continue with the body of the while loop else you continue to s3 you terminate while loop and continue with s3 so this is your while statement and um, in order to cover these statements how many test cases do you need first is to go into the uh, while body and the, the second test case to terminate the while loop so you you require a file which uh, has uh, nothing in it where end of file will be the be the beginning uh, file pointer itself and uh, then a file which has a few items in it which will be able to go through at least one so one item in, in a file is is good enough to cover 
all these these statements so a file with one single item and file with uh, nothing in it uh, an empty file could uh, will can be used to uh, cover uh, these basic parts which are two in this particular case now you let's look at the case of a repeat statement so this is your repeat statement so we have some code here so we assign a value x to temp 1 and then x square to temp 2 and set i to 0 and then repeat x equal to x plus temp and also increment the i count until x becomes equal to temp 2. So that means we are, we are showing that uh, by adding uh, the value of x again and again you can uh, generate the square. So and then at the end of once we come out of this repeat loop we print the value of x and i. So we know that we need to uh, we can we can repeat it until uh, this becomes a square of itself and uh, this then at the end of the loop we print the value of x and i. So this is this is your repeat statement and if you want to cover the uh, all the statements you need to take again this one particular path and then another path from S1, S2 to S3. So uh, we can see that this is can work uh, for values. This will not work for all the values. So if, if the value is just 1, then uh, the x, x will uh, get added to itself and the uh, value will become 2 and you may never terminate this loop. So this uh, criteria gives you all these paths. But uh, if you choose uh, that test, so if uh, 1 is the uh, uh, value of i is uh, i's uh, value of x to be 1 is good enough, but then uh, uh, once you get into this particular statement, you might not come out of this. But at the same time, so uh, if, if it is stated uh, that this loop works for uh, this particular uh, set of values, then you will be able to at least cover these paths. So you can see that these criteria are, are not perfect and uh, they may not still detect all the possible uh, 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 errors. For example, boundary value analysis is not done in this and uh, typically you are mainly looking at only the, uh, the structure of the code and the available uh, statements and the uh, available uh, branchings. So through them you are, you are covering the test. So in this repeat statement, this is the uh, diagram or this is the flow graph of the repeat statement. So coming back to our uh, flow diagrams and uh, how to compute the basic paths. So you have this S1, S2 and S3. So S1 is your uh, basic statement where you are incrementing x with temp and uh, incrementing the value of i and then you are going to S2 and uh, uh, you can see that S2 is the branching node from where you have two outgoing edges whereas S1 is your uh, elementary uh, statement and from S2 you can come back to S1 or you can jump to S3. So un un until you get, uh, get, get the square you continue otherwise you uh, slide to S3 and continue your execution after the repeat statement. So here we can see that there is once uh, this path from S1, S2 to S3 and, uh, and in order to coverage this particular cover this particular edge, you need to take a, uh, choose a test case such that you cover S2, S1, S2 and um, come back uh, to S1 and then uh, perhaps take S2 again and then uh, through S3 you come out. Then we will look at another possible statement in uh, programming languages such as C, C++. So you have this switch case statement where you have many choices at the switch node and uh, you can fork into many choices and then join later. So for example, here you have a choice, if the choice is T then you prepare T, so drink equal to prepare T and then terminate the case statement. Another case is if the choice is coffee then you prepare coffee, your choice is juice, you prepare juice and so on. So you have these three different cases. And this is your branching S1 is, is the branching statement or the, the branching uh, uh, predicate from where you, uh, you find out what the choice is and then branch to appropriate nodes and then you join at S5. So uh, S5 is your serve drink or it is actually the termination of switch loop and I have combined the serve drink with that because uh, it is in sequential composition you need not uh, 
I have to point out all the nodes. So S5 can be your serve drink which is the end of your switch statement. So here in, if, if you want to cover all the statements, these are the basic paths S1, S2, S5, S1, S3, S5 and S1, S4, S5. So uh, this is the uh, flow uh, graph for a specific switch statement and then if we look at a compound condition. So uh, typically say if A or B, so in this, in this example we can see that we have a compound condition. So we are looking at uh, two values and we have we want to execute x if a or b is true. So uh, if a is true we will execute x if, uh, if a is not true if a if b is true then also we will execute x if both of them are true then we will again execute x else otherwise something else will be done. So if a and b both are false then something else will be done and this is the uh, compound uh, the, the flow graph for this compound condition. So this is your S1 which is which checks for A. So if A is true we execute X and then join at the end of the uh, conditional um, branching statement. So the last node is the, jo the, the joint point of this uh, condition compound conditional statement. Now if A is found to be false then S2 checks for B. So B could be false or true. So we have a branching here. So we have the first branching at A. If A is true then execute X and we can continue. So we do not need to check for B. If A is not true then the uh, lower path is taken. So in S2 we check for B. If B is true then we execute x and then we join at the end of the conditional statement and if b is false we execute y and then we again join at the end of the conditional statement. So in this case we have this flow graph where we have two branches. So this is an example of a compound uh, condition. So we need to carefully look at these compound conditions and uh, formulate the flow graphs. So otherwise we, we will miss some of the branches and then uh, they become implicit uh, and then you do not cover for them and uh, oh, that will result into uh, errors getting un undetected because of you know, not covering all, all the basic paths in the control flow graph of your program. So now here we will look at measure called uh, cyclomatic complexity and see how that uh, gives us a clue to generating these basic paths. So uh, after, uh, uh, so we have looked at all these um, basic statements and uh, their flow graphs and uh, in a typical, uh, in, a, in a big program you have to analyze the uh, entire program and generate the flow graph of this, uh, of your given program and then find out how many paths in the entire uh, flow graph should be tested so that uh, you will cover all these uh, all the statements of the program so that you can satisfy your statement coverage. So uh, uh, typically a program includes many branches and uh, many statements and you may have many such paths. So uh, you need to uh, cover cover the paths. So uh, how many cases are, are required? You know, uh, you, uh, we have to reduce the number of cases but we should also uh, uh, make sure that all the statements get covered. So um, uh, the, uh, there is a measure called cyclomatic uh, complexity and that, uh, that measure uh, actually tells us how many paths we need to uh, generate so that uh, this uh, our criteria is satisfied. So cyclomatic complexity gives number of independent paths in, in the basis set or the, the basis the basis set for these paths for, for this uh, statement coverage is that which has the, uh, the very basic uh, independent paths uh, so that uh, each path gives you at least one uh, extra covers at least one extra edge in the, in the uh, flow graph. So uh, um, they are not that means they are not redundant. So it gives upper bound on number of tests that must be conducted to ensure all statements get covered at least once. So this could, could be computed as number of regions. So in that you count outer region also a number of predicate nodes plus one or you can count it as uh, number of edges minus number of vertices plus two. So that is your uh, number of regions. So you can see that cyclomatic uh, complexity for this 
compound condition which we had just seen a couple of minutes ago can be computed here to be 3. So, if you look at this flow graph, so we have this A at A we have a branching if A is true we are going to go and execute X that is we are going to take upper path if A is false then we will check if A if B is true then we will take the middle path and we will go via this X else if B is not true then we are going to take Y that means if A is not true and B is also not true we take the bottom path and then we join here. So, we have this one region which is this one which uh, over which uh, the uh, mouse I am rolling the mouse and then this is uh, the middle region and you have the outer region. So, these three regions give you the count of the number of regions give you the cyclomatic uh, complexity. So, you can calculate as number of predicate nodes plus one. So, you have this one node and this another node. So, you have two branches. So, this number of predicate nodes plus one. So, 2 plus 1 equal to 3 or number of ages minus number of vertices plus 2. So, number of ages, how many ages are there? This is 1, this is second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh, and number of vertices this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So, uh, 7 minus 6 plus 2 and you get 3. So, uh, basis set has 3 paths. So, if you have 3, so we know 3 paths, and then if you have these 3, if you take these 3 paths, so, you take this conditional and then take one branch and cover it, then go to another branch and uh, at this conditional uh, take one branch and cover it and then uh, for the second one cover other branch as well and keep the earlier one as, as it is still here. So, you get this one path top one, the, this is the middle path and the lower path. So, this is your basis set and these three paths if you cover, you are able to cover all the statements. So, this is your cyclomatic uh, complexity example. And uh, it will be interesting to see that if you even if you have very um, too many statements and many paths, this number of regions that you have could be small and uh, with this basis set, this gives you the upper bound. And so, uh, these many paths you need to generate. So, how do you generate these paths? You have to select the values such that these paths get covered. So, you have to select appropriate values of A and B. So, this next slide uh, tells you what are these values. So, if we look at this uh, example again, so three independent paths are as follows, A is found to be true and then A is not found to be true, but B is found to be true and A is not found to be true and B is also not true. So, test suit is the following, A is true, B is false. So, we have chosen B to be false here with A is true, but it does not matter. But then A false B true is another test and test number 3 is A is false and B is false. So, these 3 tests can cover all the statements. So, these 3 tests give you the 3 basic paths in this particular example. So, and this is the, the, the statement. So, if you have this statement which is the which you can find at the, the bottom of the slide, if A or B then X else Y, if you have this statement you require 3 test cases such that you can cover all the paths, but in this control flow graph and then that all the basic paths in the uh, that is independent paths in the basis set and then that results in covering all the statements in the in the program. So, if A or B then L then X else Y for to test this you require 3 test cases, which, which may not be apparent if you just look at the statement. You might think that you need to execute then part and else part only once. But if you look at this, you have th there are three possible uh, independent paths. So, this close analysis reveals the different uh, uh, basis, uh, the paths in the base, the basic paths in the basis set, in that is the independent paths. And you need to select appropriate values such that these the basis set gets covered and that results in statement coverage. So, are the uh, independent paths in the basis set unique? So, uh, they, they need not be unique. Uh, in this example, uh, of course, they are, you have these three paths, but uh, uh, you can construct various examples or you can construct programs. In general, uh, you can cover through different uh, basis paths in a, in a bigger program and uh, I will leave it to you as an exercise. So, try to write a program where there are different ways uh, to construct uh, the basis set or to construct the set of uh, independent paths. So, say take uh, 
four paths uh, and then see whether uh, you can construct two examples that has four exactly four uh, independent paths in the basis set and you have two different uh, basis basis sets now we will uh, look at another uh, criteria for uh, white box testing in condition testing we mainly approach from the point of view of the composition of conditions so uh, here uh, we can see that we can have simple conditions or compound conditions so how to approach these conditions so testing is basically uh, white box testing has been uh, covered in, uh, in, in in great detail in literature and there are many different approaches and ways to design your test suit based on white box testing so you could do a very exhaustive testing but it won't be possible due to uh, you know simply uh, extremely very high uh, very large amount of large number of test cases so exponential number of uh, test cases uh, so it won't be possible to cover exhaustively for uh, all possibilities and you will have to execute literally the program uh, you know for all possible cases uh, you know through so for example you uh, if you have a loop you may not know how many times uh, you need to execute the loop for a specific value if you have a say loop from 0 to 100 for a specific value the loop uh, may not execute correctly so but still uh, so all of exhaustive exhaustive testing uh, may be impractical but still these coverage criteria gives us certain level of confidence and uh, there are many such uh, different methodologies and uh, methods basically approaches to uh, white box testing uh, which you can find in literature so we looked at uh, these various uh, criteria for uh, statement coverage and then we looked at the approach from uh, cyclometric uh, complexity point of view and now we will look at we will mention a few approaches from condition uh, from the point of view of conditions and composition of conditions so uh, if you look at uh, conditions they are mainly classified as simple conditions or compound conditions and a simple condition is typically a boolean variable or you could also have relational operators such as say, a less than b a greater than or equal to less than or equal to you know or a equal to b and so on and a compound condition has a composition of two or more simple uh, conditions two or more uh, even compound uh, uh, conditions so a compound conditions condition can be complex uh, and uh, uh, the composition uh, is done through uh, typically boolean operators so error could uh, occur in in in, uh, in conditions due to wrong variable values and uh, wrong choice of operators wrong expressions inside the conditions and uh, parenthesis problems so there could be uh, parenthesis problems where uh, the uh, parenthesis are not closed appropriately or you know, they're, they're, they're closed at uh, inappropriate places so condition testing uh, looks at basically conditions and analyzes the different uh, compositions and derives test suits based on the conditions so for example uh, uh, you could have a branch testing policy which says uh, that you test uh, for true and false for c so you have a condition c test for true and false for c and make sure that every simple condition in c is executed uh, at least once so this criteria could be uh, designed for your uh, approach from point of view of the composition of conditions and conditions or you could uh, take a more exhaustive approach and say that if you have you have uh, a boolean expression with n variables and test for all possible to to rest in values so this uh, gives you all possible values for example if we have uh, a b and c and so we will just uh, make a simple table so you have these three boolean variables so how many val values can you have can you generate for you know, as uh, your test suit that uh, satisfies this criteria of uh, domain testing that is uh, you know, test for all possible uh, test to n values so you have uh, here three and you can generate uh, eight uh, different test cases uh, for this conditional coverage criteria 
so uh, this is more exhaustive and uh, you need to generate all possible values and many times it, it's not possible to uh, test exhaustively for a large uh, program so uh, you reduce your criteria and based on these basically the path based criteria are quite common so uh, if you have these boolean expression you can generate these uh, test suits with uh, uh, different uh, with these values of uh, all your boolean variables and uh, and simply generate your test suit through a table and uh, if you have relational op operators for example if you have a or b so less than or equal to b and so on test for a less than b a greater than b and a equal to b so that you are able to cover uh, the implicit uh, paths as well so uh, conditional uh, condition testing strategies look at mainly the conditions in the uh, the uh, in the program the branching uh, the, the conditional uh, predicates and composite conditions and uh, the approach is from the point of view of uh, conditions and their composition so uh, this is this is another approach to uh, white box testing and then uh, there are there are various uh, uh, other approaches so we will also mention uh, data flow uh, testing strategies it basically uh, you select uh, paths based on uh, the uh, the data flows so uh, you find out where, where a definition where a data is defined and uh, where it is used and uh, based on that definition use chains you form and you try to cover uh, uh, cover uh, du chains at least once so uh, where data is defined and where it is used so if if it it is defined in one statement and if it is used in two uh, different branches you must uh, take that definition and uh, uh, take its uh, and test uh, generate test pass is that both the usages are are covered so this is another approach and uh, it it, uh, it it's mainly from the point of view of data flow so uh, there have been such uh, many uh, approaches uh, you can you can find and uh, and a test test oracles could be built to analyze uh, uh, these uh, your programs and uh, automatically generate test cases and then uh, the validation criteria have to be satisfied and when the uh, test uh, when you run your programs through these uh, test cases which satisfy some of these criteria which we just discussed you have to uh, validate the output find out whether uh, the given uh, output the, the generated output uh, is as per uh, uh, what is expected so uh, re, uh, one one can uh, write such uh, or uh, use uh, the tools to an analyze the programs and generate the tests and which also automatically test these programs against the test generated so we have seen through this different uh, the different examples in slides how you can approach uh, approach testing from structural point of view or white box point of view we are mainly looking at the structure of the program different conditions used different uh, the branchings and uh, the loop uh, looping constructs and the composition of sequential statements and the program uh, has many such and uh, you if you approach from the uh, the basis set or the independent paths uh, point of view or the cyclomatic complexity you will be able to cover all the statements so uh, but we have also seen that it does not detect it may not detect still uh, errors errors might still be uh, still go undetected because uh, say for example absence of features and so on so uh, uh, now we have uh, an example program for you and on this slide uh, you can try different strategies on the below program and uh, you know make a few errors and then uh, try the test again so not only this program but uh, you you could take any of uh, your um, programming assignments data structures or algorithm scores or where or your database uh, course or any operating systems and so on so any take take any of your programming assignments which you are uh, uh, which you uh, which which are coding or which you have coded and then apply these criteria and uh, test the program so in order so uh, you probably have not been applying uh, any of these methods formally so uh, the, 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 this uh, uh, some of these techniques uh, you should try to apply and see whether by applying these test cases will you be able to uh, detect the bugs so if you find a bug you uh, go and try to apply some of these techniques white box and black box techniques uh, and then uh, uh, by through 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 that see whether you are able to detect your bugs